This is our planet's hothouse. The jungle. The tropical rainforest. Forests like these occupy only 3% of the land, yet they're home to over half of the world's species. But how do so many different kinds of plants and animals find the space here to live alongside one another? On the dark, humid forest floor, the jungle appears to be lifeless. Often, the only signs of life are what you hear. Here I come! Julia is a well-rounded character, whose wide, varied toolkit allows her to adapt to just about any situation, but really specializes at getting in the opponent's face and piling on the pressure with her deadly mid-low mix-ups and versatile throw game. Which both lead to some devastating Okizeme afterwards thanks to her infamous elbows. Julia has no trouble getting into her preferred range and enacting her game plan. She also boasts some of the best combos in the game in terms of raw damage and wall carry. And once she gets to the wall, Julia is very dangerous. However, while Julia can control space very well with Party Crasher, the damage on it is quite low. This means that if Julia is behind on the life lead, she's forced to gamble and take big risks. Up close, she also lacks a fast plus on hit low, further reinforcing the point that if she wants to open the opponent up, she has to commit. Also, many of her best moves have multiple inputs meaning some execution is required to get the most out of her, both while playing the neutral and in combos. Still, Julia's ability to shift gears between solid compact play and explosive high damage craziness makes her one of the most intimidating and powerful characters in Tekken 7. Okay, here goes. Forward Forward 1, aka Party Crasher, is Julia's trademark elbow attack, and her key tool for controlling space and forcing her way in on opponents. With the quickest possible input, Party Crasher comes out in a lightning fast 12 frames, has a fat hitbox, and can also go under certain small highs like jabs. Don't think of this as a 12 frame move though, as in most cases, it will come out in 13 or 14 frames. Though it can be evaded by a well-timed sidestep left, delaying your forward dash will reorient with the opponent's step. It's also very hard to whiff punish on reaction. On block, it's only minus two, so Julia can still move around with ease or counter-hit the opponent doing a slow move. To further discourage the opponent from retaliating, Julia can follow up with forward forward 1-4. This is a safe on block, natural combo when undelayed. This string can be massively delayed though to bait retaliation, and on counter-hit will lead to a full combo. Just be careful, as it's a non-jailing high, and if delayed, can be interrupted or sidestep right. Down, down forward one, commonly known as shotgun, is another extremely strong tool to constrain and confine the opponent's movement. Thanks to its chunky hitbox, it's very hard to step, 
though a well-timed sidestep right will do the trick. Shotgun comes out fast in 12 frames, though as with Party Crasher, more often than not this is actually 13 or 14 frames, and is also cancelable to clockwork evasive stance, commonly abbreviated as CES. We'll look at the moves from CES in more detail in the stances section. If you're really on the ball, Shotgun is also counter-hit confirmable to the follow-up, and also has utility in certain combos. Both Party Crasher and Shotgun come out in 12 frames, and cover about the same range. So you might be thinking, well, when do I use each one? Party Crasher is your baseline tool. It boasts superior frames, and as mentioned, if delayed, tracks very well. Shotgun, on the other hand, has greater damage potential, both in and of itself and the confirmable counter-hit follow-up, and the spin mix-ups are good at bringing overly defensive opponents out their shell. So mix and match these tools to stay unpredictable. Along with Party Crasher and Shotgun, while running one is another main reason why Julia has such a dominating grip over the mid-range. This is a fast ranged elbow that gives you plus frames on block, albeit with some pushback, so you can't really enforce a mix-up in open ground. On hit, it gives you a free running 2-1 for a nice chunk of damage, and some incredibly powerful Okizeme, which we'll cover in the mix-up section. Or forward forward 2 for easier execution. The great thing about running 1 is that even if the opponent blocks, they're getting their back pushed further and further towards the wall, where Julia is very strong. Just be careful, as it is a high and quite linear. However, Party Crasher neatly covers both of these weaknesses. So, you use an elbow to cover your elbow, and then once they're sick of your elbows, you elbow them a bunch more. Did I mention Julia likes elbows? Elbow. <laughs> Julia's back four is another strong tool to condition and control the opponent's movement. Though it's a little slow and a high, this is a plus on block homing move that leads to a full combo on natural hit. While the range is better than it looks, you still need to be fairly close though. If you notice the opponent is stepping a lot, use back four to keep them in line and lock them down. Here I come! One of Julia's best pokes is down forward 3, though its range isn't quite as long as Shotgun or Party Crasher, it's still quite impressive. Being a single input, it's much easier and faster to execute, and is also quite good at catching sidestep right. On block, you're left at minus 7, so you don't have many options after. There is a natural comboing mid follow-up to discourage the opponent from challenging you though, but be careful, as it is minus 13 on block. Down forward 4-2 is a powerful, but somewhat risky mid-string. The range is pretty good, though just a tad shorter than down forward 3, and also one frame slower. While this isn't a natural combo, should it connect on counter hit, you have ample time to confirm into the back forward 1 follow-up for a nice chunk of damage. This follow-up is actually a secret move that's not on the command list. If you connect this near a wall, it's really going to hurt. Down forward 4-2 is unsafe on block, so you need to discourage the opponent from punishing by occasionally finishing the string, which is also unsafe. You can also end with a safe high, just don't be too predictable of course. 
This move's biggest weakness is its incredibly poor tracking and slow recovery on whiff. Only use down forward 4-2 if you've trained the opponent not to step by mixing up your party crasher timing and with Julia's tracking moves. Though Julia lacks a fast, natural plus on hit low, down 3 is still one of her most important moves due to its sheer speed, strong tracking, and surprisingly decent range, making it a strong tool to chip away at the opponent's health bar. Down 3 catches sidestep right very well, and most characters can only evade it laterally with a side walk left, which is scary to commit to due to back 4. The damage may be low, but it's only minus one on hit, so Julia can move around and fish for baits, or use jabs and magic four to snipe out slower moves. On counter hit, it also gives plus four and forces crouch, significantly limiting the opponent's options. Dream is live! You ready? Julia's down forward one is pretty unconventional. It's a little bit slower than a generic one, and on block her options are more limited. Regardless, this is still one of Julia's best moves for its raw damage potential. If this connects on a crouching opponent, Julia is left with an absurd plus 14 to work with, allowing her to get some massive guaranteed damage in. Down forward one will put the fear into opponents for random ducking against her, and when combined with her devastating lows and throws, is a must use move for Julia. Down forward one's biggest weakness though, is its terrible range so it's best used at the wall or after a close range back fall. <laughs> Julia again has an unconventional hop kick, which hits twice and is a little slower than a generic one. Along with down forward one, this is another terrifying mid to mix with Julia's lows and throws. The crazy thing about this move is that with the correct timing, you can perform an option select where Julia will automatically finish the string if it connects, and only do the first hit if it's blocked, essentially giving her a safe hop kick. While this does sound pretty broken, and it is, the timing is very specific. Think of this as a kind of just frame that characters like Lee have a ton of. <laughs> we recommend going around the buttons counterclockwise and quickly pressing 4213 to get it down. In the heat of a clutch match, it's very easy to get this wrong. Even if it is blocked though, unlike Tekken Tag Tournament 2, it's not launch punishable anymore, with the exception of Coke Adult Kazuya, of course. <laughs> Given Julia's tremendous combo damage and wall carry, this is an insanely powerful tool. Snake, try to remember some of the basics of CQC. Despite not being a dedicated grappler, Julia might just have the best throw in the entire game with mad axes. Again, this is another very unique and unconventional move, in that it's both significantly faster than a normal throw, and Julia can store it for what seems like an eternity. This means you can input quarter circle back, typically during another move or action, and then input forward two, up to one or even two seconds later, at which point mad axes will then immediately come out at the earliest possible frame. Due to how fast Mad Axes is, a lot of people will preemptively break 1 plus 2, which opens them up to her other grabs. 
She has down forward 1 plus 3 for a 1 break, back 2 plus 4 for a 2 break. This is best used when your back is against the wall. And then of course mad axes or up forward 1 plus 2 for the double hand break. Up forward 1 plus 2 is slower and not as damaging as mad axes, but has stronger okizeme. An immediate forward 4-3 four, will beat everything but side rolls. <laughs> and slightly delaying your forward forward 3 will beat those. This in turn leads to yet more Okizeme. Fully crouch down forward forward 3, sometimes known as bow and arrow, is one of the main reasons Julia's fully crouch mix-ups are so intimidating. Some common moves to get into crouch are back 3, 1 plus 4 into a crouch cancel, forward 3 into a crouch cancel, a charged while standing 2-2 two, two into a crouch cancel, or sidestep 2. Bow and arrow is a damaging, natural low mid-string, especially near the wall, where you can get a free forward forward 3, and on big characters, namely Jack, Bears, Marduk, and Gigas, a free down 1 plus 2. It also gives extremely strong Okizeme in the open. Down 1 plus 2 will catch everything but staying on the floor, and from further ranges a spring attack, while forward 4 2 catches those, so it's essentially a 50 50. Just beware that down 1 plus 2 will actually whiff on Marduk and Bears due to their stubby legs. You have tons of strong mids to mix bow and arrow with while in crouch, such as the previously mentioned option select hop kick. So this is a great move for Julia to make a comeback with if she needs to. Just be careful, as bow and arrow is launch punishable by just about the entire cast. Though the first hit, while unsafe, doesn't stagger on block which is unusual for a high damage knockdown low of this type. So you can occasionally use it by itself to confuse the opponent. Due to the pushback on block, a lot of characters also have trouble punishing this properly. For this reason, experienced players will usually try to low parry if they see bow and arrow coming. <laughs> While standing three is probably the most common mid from crouch, it's a mid, safe, wall splatting homing move that's pretty fast and due to the ballerina stun can give you a free mix up on hit since from point blank range it leaves you at the perfect distance for a natural combo wardrobe. More on this soon. It'll also put any airborne opponents into a screw and on counter hit gives you a free forward forward 2 for good damage. 4-2 aka Wardrum is again a very unique move in Tekken. The first hit is both a low and a high at the same time. The follow up mid ender is guaranteed if only the low connects since it has slightly more range than the high. If the opponent blocks the mid you'll most likely get launched as it's very unsafe so you need to find that sweet spot through some very specific spacing. At this particular range, you now have a damaging low mid wall splatting natural combo, which is, yeah, pretty cheap. Finding that sweet spot is often done for you though, since certain setups and knockdowns leave you automatically at the perfect range. Such as after a deep party crasher string on hit. After a forward forward 3 or running 1 into running 2 1, walk back a little bit and you'll be in the perfect range for Wardrum if the opponent techs. Party Crasher will float everything else for a combo and do chip damage on a back recovery. Another good Wardrum tech roll setup is after a while standing 4 on hit. Do a back dash followed by a very small sidestep to put you in the perfect range. Wardrum also combos on counter hit, 
a nice visual cue to help you out with confirming the follow-up is that 4-2 sparks on counter hit only. So you basically have an unseeable low poke, with an easy counter hit confirm into a damaging wall splatting follow-up. While it is quite risky, War Drum is one of the most intimidating lows in the entire game, especially when at the wall. Speaking of Julia's wall game, Ford Ford 1 plus 2 is your go-to mid when at the wall. Unquestionably one of the best wall bouncers in the game. This is a safe, fast mid that's the perfect complement to war drums. Since it comes from a dash motion, it can also be performed from crouch, making it a nice option to mix with bow and arrow as well. Finally, to round off the mix-up section, let's quickly talk about back three. This is a seeable low, so of course use with caution, but it does have some nice perks. It high crushes very quickly, making it good against jab happy opponents. On hit it gives you plus frames and leaves you both in crouch. For characters without a parry or counter, the only thing they can do here is block opening them up to bow and arrow. On counter hit, it also gives a full combo. On block, it can only be launch punished by Josie and a metered Akuma, so it's generally best to low parry on reaction. Back three also has a low follower, but this is very easily interruptible on block. It does make your mix ups on hit even stronger though, since your opponent will be tempted to low parry, and instead eat powerful mids or bow and arrows instead. Should the canned follow up connect, it leads to easy combos with while standing three. Don't forget to subscribe! Down forward 2-1 is your main whiff punisher from mid to close range, and typically used after successfully evading a move with a step or back dash. Connecting it leads to a canned animation, so even if you are really off axis, Julia will automatically reorient, so you can consistently land your preferred bread and butter. Thanks to Julia's massive combo damage and wall carry, Landing this can completely shift the round in your favor. Forward Forward 3 is Julia's main whiff punisher at ranges outside of down forward 2 1, and her main option after down forward 1 connects on a crouching opponent. It gives a running 2 1 follow up for beefy damage and powerful Okizeme, especially for a whiff punisher of this speed and range. This can be a little tricky though, so you might want to do forward forward 2 until you get the hang of it. Finally, when near the wall, forward forward 1 plus 2 is your go to whiff punisher. <laughs> For the same reasons listed in the space control section, Party Crasher is a great move to halt the opponent's approach. Standing 4 or Magic 4 is your primary keepout tool though. Like any Magic 4, this gives a combo on counter hit. Unlike a generic Magic 4 though, it's unsafe on block. Julia does have follow ups to make the opponent hesitate to punish, but you need to commit to them beforehand which prohibits you from comboing. Do note that if you want to combo from further ranges, you'll need to delay Party Crasher. The timing on this is quite tight, so we recommend you practice this. Finally, Magic 4 can be used in frame traps to interrupt overly aggressive opponents. One more good keep out tool is Up Forward 1. Though a little slow to recover on Whiff, this is a pretty fast mid counter hit launcher with some strong tracking, especially against sidestep right. 
Julia also lowers her hitbox, making it strong against characters who like to approach with certain highs or high strings. Though, this is not a high crush. A good setup against jab happy opponents is Party Crasher on block into up forward one. Do note that this won't work against all characters' jabs. Usually on normal hit, you just get some frame advantage. But if the opponent holds down, then forward forward two is guaranteed. So be on the lookout for this. One 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 is a string starting from a 10 frame jab, with all three hits being guaranteed on counter hit. The opponent always has to keep this in the back of their mind when pressuring Julia, and it's extremely strong near walls since it can splat. Be sure not to finish the string though if it didn't land on counter hit, as it's quite unsafe on block at minus 14. A good visual cue to help you out is that the second hit will put the opponent into crouch if the first jab connected on counter hit. As well as being your main keep out tool, standing four is also a strong panic move. If you anticipate the opponent is going to use a slower move when you're at a minor disadvantage, for example after a blocked party crasher, then standing four will discourage them from overextending their pressure, allowing you to start throwing them into submission. Up forward 4-3, the previously mentioned hop kick, is also a good panic move since it crushes lows from frame nine, so can be good to scare your opponents from doing lows or down jabs. Down one is a generic down jab, used to interrupt the opponent out of pressure since it also high crushes and is extremely fast at 10 frames. Julia especially has a very good down jab, since on hit, she can do while standing three to counter hit anything the opponent tries afterwards, as well as stopping them from stepping, of course. If you want to go for a stronger but riskier mid option, while standing one also can't be interrupted and catches sidestep left. What really makes these mids scary though, is that most characters can't backdash bow and arrow after a point blank down jab. Though do note that it can still be low crushed with a hop kick. As mentioned when we went over shotgun in the space control section, you can go into a CES spin afterwards by pressing either kick button. You can also access CES from 1-2 jabs, while standing 2, or manually with 3 plus 4. Let's now take a look at your options in more detail. CES 1 is a 15 frame high that can counter hit slower retaliations from your opponent for a combo. After a blocked shotgun, any move slower than 13 frames will be interrupted. CES 1 recovers quickly, making it tricky to crouch punish, so be sure to use a fast while standing move. CES 4 1 plus 2 is Julia's low option out of the stance. It high crushes and also grants a full combo when near a breakable wall or balcony. but this doesn't mean it wall splats. Just be careful since both the low and mid extension are launch punishable on block, so use this sparingly. CES 2 is used as a mid option to complement CES 4 1 plus 2. It's safe on block and on hit leaves you at major plus frames and often, though not always, at the perfect range for a natural combo war drums. Do be careful that occasionally, Julia will be left a little too close, which can be really dangerous if you finish the string. 
Here, if the opponent backdashes, they can actually put themselves into optimal war drum range, making this one of the few instances in Tekken where backdashing can actually be a bad idea. There's not much reason to use the CES 3 string. It comes out in the same speed as CES 2, both hits are unsafe, and you can't delay them either for mental frame advantage. Be careful though, the second hit is listed as minus 13 in the frame data, but more often than not, due to pushback, it's actually minus 12. So depending on your character, you might have to settle for suboptimal punishment. By far the most useful move to go into CES with is Shotgun. Down jab will beat all options, but Julia can just do an empty spin into low parry. A 12 frame mid, however, will always interrupt all CES options on block. If your opponent is on point with this, bait it out for plus frames, and then put on the pressure with your other formidable mix-up tools. Swift Step, performed with forward 3, is a good way to quickly close distance while evading lows and highs. Though, do beware, you are vulnerable to being floated in the latter half of the animation. Once you successfully get in with Swift Step, press 4 to do an unseeable plus on hit low that combos on counter hit. 2 for a safe, wall splatting knockdown mid, which also combos on counter hit. Or hold down to go into crouch. Forward 3 1 or lashing arrow, performed by quickly tapping the buttons after one another, is a powerful move commonly used in combos to punish really unsafe moves with pushback or to punish big whiffs from a distance. Forward 3 1 is basically Julia's while standing 1, but can be performed more quickly than going into a crouch cancel. While it launches on hit, do be careful as it's unsafe on block. Finally, Swift Step Up Forward 3 plus 4 is a bit useless, being a super unsafe launcher, but it can in very fringe situations be used as a combo ender to wall splat. Julia's Rage Art is completely unremarkable. It's a super unsafe mid that takes 20 frames to come out and starts absorbing hits on the 8th frame. Julia's Rage Drive is quite similar to Feng's or Paul's. It's a reasonably fast mid that wall splats from a mile away. In open ground, although you're plus on block, you can't really do much with it due to the pushback. If the opponent is shoved into the wall though, they take a guaranteed 5 points of damage and are left at minus 7, leaving them in a terrifying position. Overall, Julia's Rage Drive makes her already amazing wall game that much more oppressive. At minus 10, you get 1-1 one, one for more damage, or 1-2 for more plus frames. At minus 12, you can get in a party crasher, but it's super hard. You can also do 2 back for a side switch if your back is near the wall, or forward 2 4, which is less damaging, but leaves you with more plus frames. At minus 13, down forward 3 1 plus 2 is a nice, damaging, consistent punisher. But if you're feeling brave, you can also go for forward forward 3, which is very hard, but very damaging. At 15 frames, you have down forward 2-1 for a launch, or forward 4-1 four, for some pushback moves. But your main pushback punisher is down 1 plus 2. You can use forward 3-1 for punishing really unsafe moves with a lot of pushback from any range. A good example of this is Kuma's forward forward 2. 
not Heihachi's though. For that, you'll need to use down 1 plus 2. For crouching punishment, you have a down jab at minus 10. At minus 11, you can get in while standing 4. And Julia's is especially nice since it knocks down. At minus 12, you have fully crouched down forward 2, which is a nice, consistent, long range punisher. At minus 14, if your execution is really on point, you can go for a forward forward 3. At minus 15, you have a while standing 1. At minus 16, you can do up forward 4 3, which leads to better combos than a while standing 1. And for stagger lows, you can either do a crouch cancel down forward 2 1, or a delayed hop kick. In this section, we're going to give you a basic, practical combo formula which you can then apply to nearly all of Julia's launchers. This will allow you to play a reasonably optimized Julia as soon as possible. For a comprehensive list of optimized combos, please check the script. The link is in the description. So this formula is two filler hits, followed by a party crasher, shotgun spin, down forward 4 2 3 to screw, then finish up with a running 2 1. From here, we'll just list what the optimal filler hits are for each combo starter. For down forward 2 1, swift step up forward 3 plus 4, and quarter circle forward 2, do a lashing arrow, followed by down forward 3. <laughs> For while standing 1, count it CES1, count it swift step 2 at close range, count it swift step 4, and a low parry, do down forward 3, followed by another down forward 3. Do note that we count it CES1, you'll need to change your screw to CES2 after the shotgun spin. In general, if you're having any consistency issues with your combos, CES2 is the screw to use. It's also useful when a wall is nearby and you need to finish your combo early for a wall splat. For count it swift step 2 at max range, a magic 4, and count it up forward 1, do a deep party crasher, followed by down forward 3. <laughs> For up forward 4 3, do forward forward 3, followed by down forward 3. And for count hit back 3, either crouch cancel with a micro dash into down forward 4 plus 3, or simply do a bow and arrow. The combo with down forward 4 plus 3 is probably a bit easier, since the follow up party crasher timing is looser, but see what works for you. Oh no! Let's now look at some staple combos that don't quite fit the formula. After a back 4, do a micro dash into down forward 3 plus 4, followed by shotgun spin into CES 2 for a screw, then finish off with a dash into down forward 4 2, back forward 1 for those lovely blue sparks. Alternatively, you can finish with a dash 1 plus 2 to forward forward 3 for more damage and better okizeme, but this is quite a bit harder. After the party crasher follow up on counter hit, do a running 3 into down forward 3, then 3 party crashers. Finish the string on the last one. Let's now look at some mini combos. After a running 1 or forward forward 3 on hit, you can either do a running 2-1 for better damage and okizeme, or forward forward 2 for easier execution. You can also get a free forward forward 2 after a while standing 3 on counter hit. After connecting a down forward 1 on a crouching opponent, you can either do a forward forward 3 into the aforementioned follow-ups, or down forward 3 1 plus 2 for an easier time. At the wall, you again have a choice between forward forward 1 plus 2 for more damage but harder execution, 
or Party Crasher for easier execution but less damage. And finally, on to wall combos. After a high wall splat, up forward 3 plus 4 to a guaranteed forward forward 3 is the max damage ender. It does take some setting up though, as you have to do the running 2-1 at a certain range to get the high wall splat. If you find yourself too close to the wall to use running 2-1, use a down 2-3 instead. Also, on bigs, you can do down 1 plus 2 instead of forward forward 3 for more damage. If you can't land the up forward 3 plus 4, or after a close range splat, jab to down forward 4 2 back forward 1 deals the most damage. If you don't think you have enough time to land the jab, go directly into the down forward 4 2 string and delay the last hit. This only deals 2 points less damage. Unfortunately, this string has a nasty habit of side switching with the opponent, so you should generally only use it to close a round. Party Crasher to up forward 431 deals slightly less damage than the previous combo, but gives you stronger Okizeme and doesn't have the side switch issue. Unfortunately, it only works on roughly half the cast. Please see the description for a link to all the characters it works on. For some less damaging but ultra consistent combos, you can use 1 plus 2 4 4 for damage, or a raw up forward 4 3 1 for some strong Okizeme. Finally, after a forward forward 1 plus 2 wall bounce, if you're at range, use a forward 4 1 to wall splat then go into a combo of your choosing. When close to the wall, simply use a standing 4. Thank you for watching. This guide wouldn't have been possible without Fergus, who was my main source of Julia information throughout. He's constantly posting new Julia tech to his Twitter, and is always happy to help. So give him a follow if you want to learn more about Julia, and follow me for news and updates on that blasted salami. A big shout out to our patrons. Your ongoing support allows us to make more videos. Anyway, I'm going to go take a nap. Thanks again for watching, take care, and have a nice day.